In one form or another, I've been attached to the gaming industry for the past 12 years. I've been playing games since before my arms could reach both sides of the keyboard. I've been playing everything from Doom to Monster Bash, Mass Effect to Minecraft, Duke Nukem to Warcraft, Orcs and Humans, and everything weird in between. As a kid, games like these really made weekends worth looking forward to. You could run home, start up your home PC on a Friday, and play Age of Empires for the next five hours and forget that you needed to do your homework. That's what breaks my heart. I see far too often commentary about gaming being dead. Yes, we do live in an era where gaming is very commercial and profitable. Corporate entities, like they are, focus on income and profit. That's why our AAA titles are generally drenched in NFTs and microtransactions, rather than focusing on the challenge or the fun of the game. I know I'm generalizing, but for the most part, this is the truth. But that's why the recent resurgence of indie games and boomer shooters in the last five years or so have injected nostalgia into my veins and reminded me that you can still make games that have fun in the middle of their construction. Games that have thrilling storytelling, interesting character development, engaging gameplay, and fun and new ideas that we've never seen before. When last did you see a AAA game with a new idea? Come on, that's not how they work. It's about lowering risk and maximizing profit. That's why we've had the same Call of Duty and FIFA game for the last two decades. Indie games and boomer shooters in specific are just a small genre of this revolution. That's why it's great to see studios like 3D Realms leading the charge with the annual Realms Deep event. An eccentric, sometimes cult-like showcase of new and exciting indie games and boomer shooter titles that we may have otherwise missed this past year. Spiriting the same message as others like Reload Magazine, my goal here today is to shine a little bit of spotlights on some games that you would have otherwise missed. I'm not going to be doing any kind of ranking or list here. These are just some games that stood out to me personally. I can't mention them all. I really would like to, but we'll be here for a while. But if I have missed any of the games that you liked, mention them in the comments and link up their Steam pages. We can all show them some support. That's what it's all about, the love of gaming. I will though link every game mentioned at Realms Deep in the description of this video. So if you wanna go and check them out, if something shines out to you, please go and wishlist them on Steam or anywhere else you can support them. I know they'll appreciate it. Full disclosure, I haven't played every single game I've mentioned here, but I think they bring a lot of interesting stuff to the table. Before we start, big thanks to 3D Realms, Slipgate Ironworks, everyone working behind the scenes at Realms Deep. This year's event rocked. Anyway, let's get into it. Realms Deep was founded on boomer shooters. Violent video games, if you will. So let's start with those and get those out the way. Kicking us off is something a little different. Fida Puti Samurai. Fida Puti Samurai. Do you like waifus? Of course you do. You're a degenerate, just like me. And I respect that. If we took that level of awareness and combined it with the love of the anime girl form and applied it to a relatively self-aware, fourth wall breaking FPS scenario, then we kinda get Fida Puti Samurai. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I could be, I mean, maybe. Honestly, while I'm both excited and horrified at the prospect of this game, there's nothing else quite like it actually. Created by Zenardi and Lisa, you take the role of a gamer in a VR headset, I think, or escapism device, going on adventures in the virtual space created by your boyfriend. But things kind of go wrong when you find some dirty secrets on his PC. I mean, it could be his PC, could be someone else's, undetermined. Described as a retro FPS, Virtual Happy Place, an action orientated roguelike where you blast waifus on procedurally generated cities and it, it looks weird, but weird is good, good in this case. Go grab it now, it's on early access. I can't do the voiceover justice, but who wants some wing? One of the first on this list by publisher Hellforge Studios, created by Waffle Iron Games, Project Absentia is your first Doom-like of the day. Described by its creators as extremely violent and containing degeneracy, satirical and mature content. Sounds about fucking right. This is the first game by Waffle Iron and its dynamic first person shooter promises a lot of action, explosions, one-liners and it's sure to be a good time. Go and grab the demo right now on Steam. Episode 1 Angelic Meltdown is available. I'm not gonna lie, this one kind of reminds me of The Ring. If you see The Ring references, that's why. It's probably inspired by The Ring. I don't know that for sure, but I feel like it is. I'm beginning to wonder how many angry, vengeance-seeking protagonists we can squeeze into one video. So here's one more. Violence! So much violence. In this case, Coven is hyper-violent, not to be confused with hyper-violent. A fast-paced first-person shooter which is heavily inspired by games like Blood, Hexen, Unreal, and Time Splitters. But here, we take more vengeance. Like any other shooter on this list, Coven offers you a retro throwback feel and aesthetic, but also some modern takes on gameplay like slow motion, movement mechanics, and a unique devourer mechanic for power. Yes, we've come full circle where we can now consume the flesh of our enemies to gain life. The Coven of Ultra Kill is strong with this one, you might say. Releasing sometime in 2023, grab Coven now, it's on early access on Steam. 
Alright, so unlike a lot of games on this list, Fortune's Run has managed to slip through me numerous times. It's always been that game that I left on the table, and I meant to always go back and check it out, and see what everyone was talking about, but I never did. So for that, I do apologize. First seeing this little creation by the bodies at Team Fortune in Realms Deep 2021, this latest update of Fortune's Run has pushed me just over the edge to talk about it. So, I'm gonna try and make up for the lost time. Somewhere in the third millennium, Mankind has conquered the stars, building massive Dyson spheres across the universe, sealing the suns from the very skies. We find ourselves on one of those spheres, New Zabra, left beneath its iron skies. Desperate souls like us need to kill and steal to survive. Fortune's Run offers a high-octane, dynamic first-person shooter experience with some stealth options and RPG elements. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Solaco, but not really, but it kind of does, just in its look of gameplay. There is no release date yet for this gorgeous looking piece of work, but I highly recommend you check it out. It goes into graphic violence and drug and alcohol abuse and themes of, themes of human trafficking and uh, sexual assault. No, hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. I did actually look into this, that there is an option to censor some of these more gratuitous, uh, I guess, things. Which is actually a really nice consideration by the developers. They're able to then tell the story that they want without being deaf to the triggers and trauma of the players that they may be selling to or engaging with in the public. I haven't played it myself, so I don't know if these settings add or remove anything from the game though, but there does seem to be a strong spirit of boomer in this game, so we can be assured that everyone's going to be happy as an end result. Eventually, when they publish. And there's no date on that just yet. But go check them out on Steam just the same. Once upon a time, a friend of mine, Mega Quirity, used to say that she'll just play anything and everything that comes out of Hellforge Studios, or and I quote, whatever the fuck Bridgeburner is making. And I'm here to say that I'm very excited to play The Age of Hell. A long time coming from studio and publisher Hellforge Studios, this project has been worked on in various forms over several years, and which started out life as, I think, a complicated Doom mod, evolving into something actually completely different. Running on the GZ Doom engine, the Age of Hell brings everything the team at Hellforge Studios has to bear to your PC screen, with the promise of over-the-top gunplay, unique enemies, environmental storytelling, and a killer face-melting soundtrack. Which, by the way, for me, is just good enough reason to go and play it. Sadly, The Age of Hell <laughs> still isn't in final release, but the demo is available right now, and I highly recommend you go and check it out. Hellforge Studios only started a few years ago, and are a small part of the larger indie studio revolution, bringing back many games that we used to know from the 90s. None of that AAA microtransaction rubbish. Just some good core gameplay and creativity. It's good to see them grow, and I'm excited for all their coming projects over the next few years. So that alone, go and support them, check them out on Steam. <laughs> Bombshell Shelly is back, baby! And this time a sequel to the highly regarded Bombshell game. Taking place though, I think, after the events of Ion Fury, the boomer shooter spin-off that I love so much. Created by the team at Slipgate Ironworks and 3D Realms, you get a sense that they're creating a bombshell universe here, with references to previous games and titles throughout this one, while still making it feel like an upgrade from the original installment. It's got action, it's got boom, it's a road movie adventure, according to the developers. So you get the sense that you're gonna be, you're literally gonna be traveling, using vehicles to travel across the United States. And then, you know, shoot everything along the way. Phantom Fury promises a lot. And as a fan, it has a lot to live up to with the dramatic success following Ion Fury, released only a few years ago. Ion Fury, for one, was a part of the first boomer shooter revolution. I'm personally a big, big fan of Shelly, and I'm really excited to see her back. There is no release date for this one yet, but it is planned for some time in 2023. You think that arm makes me look cool or something? Oh, gasp! More violence, you say? Yes, I think we could do with a bit more violence, don't you think? In fact, this time, excessive, pixelated, horror violence. Okay, we're talking about Hyperviolent now, created by Terminus Arcade and Fulgrim Publishing, who promises a brutal fight across a mining asteroid colony, Commodus 27C. But this time, hordes of infected, of dark origins bleed through the walls. And yes, that could be an alien reference. I don't know, Blogsy, tell me in the comments. Another great retro shooter for this list, showcasing some extremely good sounding and looking weapons, which can be mixed and matched quickly, which makes me feel like there's quick switching involved in this game. And apparently, across a variety of game modes, which is a good thing. Hyperviolence adds another spin 
in the current boomer shooter space and i'm fine with that more action more power trips this isn't a bad thing especially in 2022 or whenever this is released speaking of release grab the demo right now on steam do yourself a favor and get that power trip going oh this one this is an interesting one this feels like something i sketched at the back of my maths workbook from grade five and that's also why i'm calling slayer x and i'm, I'm gonna coin the term if it wasn't coined already a punk shooter low graphics high action slayer x goes one step further and adds a punk rock soundtrack and aesthetic coming straight out of the 90s or kind of the noughties at this point is this what happens when gen x and millennial dude bros make games i don't know but what i do know is that slayers x is easily one of the more unique games you can find on this list and honestly half the time i don't know if the game is being hyper self-aware or completely lost its shit you're an ex-slayer and you're going up against the psycho syndicate and you're here to save the people of earth using your powers called hack blood i actually do like that word I haven't played the game yet, and there is a demo out, but it seems to run extremely smoothly, though the environments do look like something out of Microsoft 1998. Which kind of makes sense, because developer Big Z Studios Inc. says they've been making Slayer's X since 1998. I didn't even plan on that. Sorry, wait. I didn't even plan on mixing Microsoft 1998 and the... Wow, look at me. Look, it looks good fun. It's action-packed overall and an overall good time, albeit a little weird. Go grab the demo now on Steam. You don't want to miss this one who is apparently the greatest game in the world. Ah, another boomer shooter you say? I feel like every time I talk about a new boomer shooter these days, I recite My Chemical Romance's blood in my head. And look, Incision is no different. It's blood, it's got a lot of it. Incision is the latest work by Smooth Brain Dev and Hyper Strange. In essence, an old school first person shooter with no bullshit. We get blood, gore slaughter everything a healthy boomer shooty needs incision is another great game by publishers hyper strange responsible for titles like postal brain damaged dusk elderborn head on and supplice amongst others the publisher has become something of a household name in the retro shooter space and it's great to see that incision is finally getting some love for me though i slowly am starting to feel the excitement towards over the top boomer shooters for like blood over-the-top blood and over-the-top neon kind of overused at this point it seems like we get them every week but i do concede though that every release has its own thing or own twist on the tail so while i may be getting a little fatigued me personally though i am excited to see what incision can do more so what other ideas publishers and devs are able to bring us over the coming years and i think smooth brain dev and hyper strange are some of the ones to do it go and check incision out right now it's on early access go to steam go do it do the thing Ending off this violent segment, we get the last exterminator, which gives me all the kind of right energy that I used to get from Duke Nukem. Everything from the reload animation to the environments to the bad guys. Still in the early stages of development though, developer Ironworks Games has a long way to go, but they seem to be up for the challenge. You're Kira Parker, an exterminator. Your job is to kill things for a living. And now a hostile invasion of, checks notes, cockroaches has invaded your city. And you've got one job to do, take them out, in some badass high octane action, as is the norm in the violent games. Running and built from scratch using Ironworks' own Mars engine, the last exterminator has a full modding capability and level editor. Which is actually nuts, because games like this have the potential to live for basically forever. Just like Doom, and I may venture to say Proteus. Action, community driven, a good setting, I'm keen on this one. There is no release date yet, but go and wishlist them on Steam, Show these guys some support. And now for something completely different. It's competitive out there. Everybody and their grandma is competing for space and airtime and money and everything else. So it's really tough to stand out these days. So it is very refreshing when I see developers try and do something new. Bears in space. Starting out with something a little lighthearted because I'm a bear myself apparently. And Bears in space gives us the answer to the question what if bears went to space and then fought alien robots well developers broadside games have given us the answer it looks like a good time though and bears in space seems like a very light-hearted experience where your strength is only matched by the size of your over-the-top gun it seems like we'll have a very good balance of humor bearish melee combat creative weaponry and a little bit of something that every growing space cub needs almost seems like a bullet hell from this demo Oh, and honey. You need honey in this game, of course, because, you know, honey and bears. This is... It's, a, it's clever. All right, let's move on. Don't sleep on this one, guys. The idea has made me a fan, and I can't wait to check it out. Bears in Space hits Steam sometime next year. Bears.
Wars in Space. All systems online. Verge World. Instantly reminded me of Descent. Anyone else? Just me? Well, it did for me. And that's a good thing. Verge looks and feels like the flyers of old, a rarely seen approach to games these days. Developed by Bad Bones, Verge World gives us fast-paced, action-packed flight combat with the ability to customize your ships between battles in this post-apocalyptic world. Described as a racing roguelike by Bad Bones, this game mixes procedurally generated worlds with airship dogfights. If you're a Descent fan like me, I think this one looks to scratch that itch, and it has a pretty awesome synthwave music sound to boot. Verge World drops in the fall of 2022, the demo is out now. Go and check it out. Do you ever just sit at your game station, your PC or your console and just be like, damn, I just want to turn my brain off and just blow up things and, you know, blow up bugs with lots and lots of bullets. Just be left alone, just to let my mind wander. <laughs> And this is what I love about the indie scene, because Biota Swarm, or B-I-O-T-A Swarm, Biota, Biota Swarm does this kind of thing. The sense that the creators and the developers sit in the room, throw around ideas, and just generally go to each other and like, hey, that's a crazy idea, let's do it. Like, why not? Let's have a one-screen bullet hell. Shit, let's let them upgrade their guns and make them even bigger. Oh, fuck it. Fill up the entire screen with bugs. That, in a nutshell, is what Biota Swarm is. Developed lovingly by Small Bros, and that's Small Bros in small letters for a reason. Biota Swarm is a bullet hell indie game that I just can't look away from. Similar to games like Vampire Survivors, for example, you're expected to get to a point where you're going to kill everything everywhere all at once. I love it. Complete with roguelike elements, and you can upgrade and unlock new weapons, heroes, perks, by beating the bosses and completing runs. Sure, if you're into roguelikes, this is a win. If you're not, this still looks incredibly addictive, and I can't wait to play this on Steam. Its planned release is Q1 2023, and I really don't want to wait that long. <laughs> so be sure to go and wishlist this one. I'm a fan. You're going to notice that a lot of these games in this segment of the video are trying to mash things up, and I fucking love that. A refreshing take on the action defense subgenre, Sentry puts you against waves of relentless aliens and missions you to save yourself and your ship from total annihilation. In either co-op or single player, you have to use traps, turrets, and environmental destruction to save yourselves and beat those alien bastards back. One day if we ever get invaded by aliens and they're like, oh, you know, you were really bad to the alien species, yeah, I'm gonna be on the first trip down there. Anyway, I love it when a company like Fireblade Software takes a few good ideas and mashes them together, like Tower Defense. I still think that tower defense is a sleeping genre, and it's been like that for a while now, normally attributed to real-time strategy games or MMOs, so throwing that idea into space and in first-person shooters is quite refreshing, and I'd like to see more of this come through. Don't sleep on this one, get it now on Early Access on Steam. A breath away from the violent boomer shooters for a second, check this out. Yes, by a process of decapitation, you are now a new innkeep and responsible for feeding and entertaining a variety of interesting guests and customers. Whether that's a new warm fire or assisting them in a ritual rite of demonic summoning. Innkeep seems to keep a lot back in their latest trailer, but I sense has a lot to offer for every new visitor at the inn. You're someone looking for something cozy, but with a grim dark approach to the management sim indie game type, Innkeep looks like one to keep your eye on. And honestly, I'm probably going to be getting it too. It seems cozy and I might be able to just relax and look after my inn for a while. Speaking of, developer Daniel Burke is taking a page I've recently found very cool, stating It'll be released when it's done. And I like that, Daniel. I completely respect that. Guys, when this is done, it will be released. Good luck, Daniel. I look forward to it. Team 17 is quickly resettling as one of the world's leading indie publishers, giving us The Unliving, Trapang 2, Overcooked, Blasphemous, The Worms franchise. 
To name a few, Bravery and Greed promises to be another IP that is simply just adding to their extensive portfolio of games that just scream fun first, ask questions later. Reminding me of the fantasy RPG platformers of old, Bravery and Greed leans into classic fantasy hero tropes where you could choose your class and customize your items and gear to take on dungeon monsters that await you. But you don't need to venture into the dark of the dwarven hold alone. It comes with local and online co-op, making adventures even more exciting. The graphics and the color remind me a lot of that neon uh, that neon bullet hell game. I forget the name now. It's probably I'm gonna pop it up in the screen now If it pops up in the screen, it's the game I was talking about It seems to be thousands of items you can get and upgrade I'm probably gonna be hooked for hours when I eventually do get around to playing this It's time to get rich or die It seems like anything team 17 touches is either gold or near to that So bravery and greed is gonna hit right on the nose if this seems like your thing wish bravery and greed on steam today But it's being dropped on all platforms Look, I didn't see any of these coming. no secret that unlike my friends and colleagues in the boomer shooter base industry whatever i've actually not played rise of the triad no yes i know please bestow any disdain you have upon me in the comment section send it my way i deserve it rot was one of those games that just simply na never made it into my childhood somehow doom did but rot never did i don't know if it was just a few years shy or if my uncle never had it on his table we'll get to that in a little bit but I just never played it. And over time, I really wanted to. I've always been intending to go back and play the original games. They're a part of gaming history. I decided to shelve the idea for a little bit until I kind of knew what I was doing. But then, New Blood announced that Rise of the Triad was coming back again in the ludicrous edition. Now we get to play the original cult classic Rise of the Triad in this edition in 4K, which is ridiculous or ludicrous. The new edition comes with new episodes, additional music, some bootstrap music, which I'm very excited to listen to. And this is great for someone like me that's always wanted to get involved in Rise of the Triad, but never could. I'm finally getting that chance. And this collaboration between Night Dive Studios, Apogee and New Blood is just awesome. Could you guys just keep, if any of you guys hear this, if you won't, but if any of you hear this, please keep playing nice. You guys have some of the best IP from my childhood or growing up and that kind of thing. Let's bring those back. Keep making them, all right? I don't want you guys to have bad blood, rather new blood. Haha. <laughs> keep bringing these new versions out or remastered versions. This is just brilliant. Keep making it happen. This edition, though, also comes with a map editor and multiplayer. So I can finally do multiplayer of ROTT in my Discord, which you should go and check out. The link is in the description. The map editor, too, looks... Uh, I guess basic compared to Doom map editor, but pretty epic still, nevertheless. Again, a community driven game has a long shelf life, so it's great to see them coming back with this edition, not only offer it to new fans like myself, but also increase its longevity. So go over to Steam, wishlist this, and I'll be in the virtual line with you on the release. So I mentioned my uncle's desk uh, a little earlier. Basically what that means is that my uncle always used to get games from China. And I say that in inverted commas. We didn't really know where he got the games from. We only know and we were told that no, 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 no. Uncle Robert has gotten uh, new games from China and we should definitely go and play them. That's how I got games like Duke, Doom, Heretic, and apparently Kassim. Now, Chasm passed my uncle's desk when I was a youngster, and like most games he got from China, Chasm would form an essential part of my gaming childhood. One point though, in 1997, Chasm the Rift, one of the first games ever to popularize visual enemy damage, and the first Eastern European boomer shooter ever. And yes, it was inspired by other games like Doom, but it did more than that. It stood on its own two feet, being unique amongst the Doom clones of the day, mixing Lovecraftian monstrosities, time travel, aliens, AKA the Time Strikers. I say that with an accent, because that's, you know, how they did it in the game. For the time, this was groundbreaking. Now, remastered and playable in 4K with improved sound. It doesn't seem like the remaster brings anything new to the table, like the <laughs> ROTT Ludicrous Edition, no, but what it does do, it allows us to play a classic first person shooter from the 90s, now in the 20s, with new tech to boot. And just like Rise of the Triad, this gives the opportunity for new fans to come and enjoy the game, just like me. I played the demo very recently, it's smooth as hell. There are a few little weirdnesses with the map design, things actually I think Civi might have covered in his video. It does lack major mod support, and that's okay, sometimes it can just be a fun shooter. Chasm is just a good fun shooter, and we get to play it in this time. Oh, and we get the Blade Gun. I don't have a release date for it just yet, so go and check it out on Steam, wishlist it, play the demo, have some fun.
The time has come. I didn't want to close this list with a boomer shooter this time. I'll tell you why. Realms Deep has developed and evolved in the past three years into one of the leading indie gaming showcases in the world, with the character, eccentricity and relatability that I think most conventions lack these days. Not a soulless corporate sales pitch, but a show with a lot of heart. I, for one, love this year's show, and I hope we get to see new games, new names, new people, new developers in 2023, and some progress on the current games that we know today. Who knows, maybe a new global dominating IP could be in there somewhere. And I wish every single one of them luck. Until next year everyone, enjoy these games, show your support, have some fun. But before I leave you, my final anticipated game of this year's Realms Deep event. Something that I'm personally excited to get deeper into being in the same universe as Bombshell Shelley Harrison, Tempest Rising. The new real-time strategy game seemingly inspired by traditional real-time strategy games from the 90s like Command and Conquer, created by Slipgate, Ironworks, 2B Games, THQ Nordic and 3D Realms. We had to command one of three factions in a struggle for power, resources and domination. With a kick-ass soundtrack, like this is the norm in the space soundtracks are a must and what looks to be stunning visuals this could be something to keep your eye on and i'm pretty sure it's going to make a lot of waves on release speaking of there is no release date yet but we're told it's very soon